waters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, a bit earlier at about 7 a.m., a group from the coast. Welcome to Hashtag PH Vote 2013. Today on Rappler, an alleged rice smuggler is arrested for power pilferage but released after posting bail. I think we only take time, but I think it's good to show something quickly. Uh, yes, there's a lot of hope. The groundwork begins for the Philippine government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front after signing a peace deal. And protesters block voting at thousands of polling stations in Thailand. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The National Bureau of Investigation, or NBI, arrests alleged rice smuggler Davidson Bangayan, also known as David Tan, Monday, right after a Senate hearing on his illegal operations. Ayi Makaraig reports. I think uh, there's no doubt in this room that he is really the one. The news tightens on businessman Davidson Bangayan. After the Senate established that he used dummies in importing rice, Bangayan faces a new accuser, Davao City Mayor Rodrigo Duterte. Duterte presents a photo from Davao intelligence officials of notorious rice smuggler David Tan. The mayor says Tan's name came up in his investigation as the go-to guy for rice smuggling in Davao, Manila, Cebu, and Cagayan de Oro. Before lawmakers and law enforcers on live television, the notorious mayor threatens the man supposedly in the photo. Ayaw ko simula ngayon sa lahat na may bababa dito na smuggled goods. Sabi ko, pagbabarilin ko kayo. And if this guy would go to Davao and start to unload, I will gladly ki kill him. And so we go to prison. I mean, I'm old, your honor. I could spend the remaining days of my life in prison. I can do, do away with the distress by reading books and while away my time. Duterte says Bangayan has many modes of smuggling rice, including using poor farmers' cooperatives as fronts. Like Duterte, Senate Minority Leader Juan Ponce Enrile is convinced Bangayan and Tan are the same person. He moves to cite Bangayan in contempt for lying, citing his affidavit in a libel case, saying he is a.k.a. David Tan. Yes, I'm denying because I've signed Davidson Bangayan on that complaint and not AKA David Tan. Maybe my lawyer did not at the time, did not correct it. But because I saw my name in my company, that's why we we said that wala po siyang ibang nire-refer kundi kami. Hindi lang itong ebidensya kontra sa'yo na ikaw si David, ba David Tan. Maawa ka sa sarili mo. Alam mo, ayaw kitang saktan, ano? ayaw kong manakit ng tao. Sa mga komite ng Senado, may reglamento dito, hindi ka pwedeng magsisinungaling. Eh pag nagsinungaling ka, mapipilintan kami na parusahan ka ng contempt. The Senate cites Bangayan in contempt, recommending the filing of a perjury case against him and the cancellation of his passport. But Justice Secretary Leila De Lima has a surprise announcement of her own that the NBI is ready to implement the warrant of arrest against him as issued by the RTC. Investigators arrest Bangayan for a separate electricity pilferage case. Just hours later, he walks free after posting bail. De Lima admits the Bureau has yet to file an airtight case against Bangayan for rice smuggling, but insists it has evidence and witnesses. The Justice Chief draws flack from her fierce critic. The trouble with us in government is that we talk too much, act too slow, and do too little. Let me ask. Don't we? I heard it was said that what this country needs given the prevailing conditions is not more laws but more good men in public service. Let me ask again, do we subscribe to that? The Lima shrugs off the criticism, vowing to pursue Bangayan and other big-time rice smugglers. 
Senators say their findings and the testimony of Mayor Duterte raised the pressure on the Justice Department to sue Bangayan for rice smuggling. But the committee says the bigger challenge is to find the agriculture and customs officials who connived with these big-time smugglers and profited from this long-running problem. Ayi Makraig, Rappler. Tropical storm Bashang, international code name Kajiki, leaves six people dead and five others missing. The storm hit land over Shargao Island on Friday and crossed central Visayas, bringing heavy rain to areas still reeling from the effects of Tropical Depression Agaton in January and Super Typhoon Yolanda or Haiyan in November last year. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, or NDRRMC, says five people died in Cebu and one in southern Leyte. Four Filipinos and one Korean are missing in Cebu. The NDRRMC also reports 13 landslides, four incidents of flooding, and two sea accidents. The storm affects more than 42,000 people across the Visayas and the Caraga region. On January 25, the government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, or MILF, signed the final annex that paves the way for a peace deal to end decades of fighting in Mindanao. Both sides now enter the crucial phase of ground implementation. Government Peace Panel Chair Miriam Coronel Ferrer says the next challenges include creating terms of reference for the different bodies involved in the implementation of the agreement and fast-tracking the creation of the Bangsamoro Basic Law. Ferrer says setting the foundation for lasting peace in Mindanao will take some time, but Peace Panel member Senen Bakani says it's important to address immediate needs as a short-term goal. Yeah, although it, I, I think we all know it takes time, but I think it's good to show something quickly uh, because there's a lot of hope, there's a lot of optimism. Yes. That's why a follow through in terms of at least some feeling that there is a change mm. for the better. Uh, I guess we have to look at possibly low hanging fruits there. Yes. Those which we can do quickly. Like what? I suspect even s basic necessities like what potable water and electricity. Hours after the final annex was signed, fighting broke out between the military and members of the MILF breakaway group, the Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters, or BIFF. The military earlier promised it would go after what it called spoilers in the peace process. Ferrer says dealing with other groups is part of the challenges they have to address. This is a part of the process, trying to sort out where they will fit in, what kind of roles they will play along the way. Uh, that's why I said we avoid using the word spoilers, because we did have so-called spoilers in 2008 with the mm -hmm. MOA AD, and most of them are on board now. They are supporting us. The negotiators say they're optimistic about the benefits the law can provide the people of Mindanao. Panel member Yasmin Loud says one of the key achievements is a recognition of the Bangsamoro identity. The acknowledgement of Bangsamoro as an identity is already a very big, big, you know, a from a crying in Malacanang, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. From a derogatory Moro to a Bangsamoro people of, of, you know, with their dignity and history and all that intact. It's, it's already a, a big, big achievement by itself. Opposition protesters blocked voters in thousands of polling stations in Thailand during its highly anticipated polls. Protesters want to force Prime Minister Ying Lak Shinawat to step down, saying she's a puppet for elder brother Taksin, who was ousted in a 2006 coup. Millions of Thais failed to cast their vote Sunday, with protest groups forcing about 10% of polling stations to close. The disruption means there may not be enough parliament members to convene legislation. Even if Ying Luck wins, she will remain in a caretaker role with limited power over government policy until elections are held in the problem areas. The protests have left at least 10 people dead over months of unrest. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 7, some mothers are looking to medical marijuana as the last hope to help their children suffering from seizures. Thousands of parents in the Philippines' Moms for Marijuana Facebook page ask lawmakers to review marijuana's medicinal value. They also want government to begin formal research so cannabis oil can be used with food for their children. 54-year-old Cynthia Algas Vargas says she hopes mothers would not have to go to Colorado in the U.S. for treatment where cannabis is legal. At number 8. 
Oscar-winning actor Philip Seymour Hoffman was found dead of a suspected drug overdose in his New York apartment Sunday. He was 46. He was found on the bathroom floor wearing shorts and a t-shirt with a syringe in his arm. Police find a substance thought to be heroin at the scene. Hoffman, whom some call the finest character actor of his generation, won an Oscar in 2006 as Best Actor for Capote and was nominated for three more Academy Awards. And at number nine. Dylan Farrow, the daughter of actress Mia Farrow, speaks for the first time about allegations her adoptive father, film director Woody Allen, sexually abused her at the age of seven. Allen strongly rejects the accusation that first came out in 1992. Investigated over claims of abuse, Allen was not charged after psychologists found Dylan had not been molested. Allen also accuses Dylan's mother, Mia, of lying and fabricating the accusations after their bitter separation. For the full top 10, visit raptor.com's The Rap. Defense wins championships. The Seattle Seahawks hold down the Denver Broncos to just eight points while scoring 43 to win Super Bowl 48. This is the Seahawks' first ever Vince Lombardi trophy. Seattle also makes history, making the fastest score in Super Bowl after securing two points on a safety 12 seconds into the game. Linebacker Malcolm Smith bags MVP honors for picking off a Peyton Manning pass and racing 69 yards for a touchdown in the second quarter. Philam Douglas Baldwin Jr. also scored a touchdown for the Seahawks. Bruno Marsh performs at halftime, singing his hit songs, Locked Out of Heaven, Treasure, and Just the Way You Are. For our social media post of the day, with the outcome of Super Bowl 48 nearly decided by halftime, American football fans are quick to point out the lackluster play by the Broncos. Most of the memes feature star quarterback Peyton Manning calling for a blackout, which happened in last year's Super Bowl. NBA player Nicholas Batum also posts a cartoon showing Homer Simpson switching sides from the Broncos to the Seahawks, while another one suggests it was such an ugly game, Bruno Mars' halftime performance should have been the main event. Well, every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our readers and viewers the most emotionally in the last 24 hours. These 10 stories have gotten the most number of votes on their mood meter. If you take a look today, it's a, a, a gray, which means sad. Uh, red and purple and a little bit of green. The gray is dominated by Patricia Evangelista's piece on uncovering the disaster in, ha in uh, Tacloban, the baby in the backpack. You have, interestingly, 12% inspired and 76% sad, 6% angry that anger bringing out these other stories. RH Law headed for defeat in Supreme Court. That's uh, an inside track by Rappler, 92% angry. Um, and you have the story that's gotten the most number of votes for the day in the last 24 hours. Denise Cornejo to Vong Navarro, fear hell, be a man. 13% uh, don't care, 67% are annoyed. That purple bringing out the mood of the day. Today, most people are annoyed. That is Rappler's newscast for today, Monday, February 3rd, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.